The DJI Air 3 and the Mavic 3 have got additional cameras that give you the equivalent of an optical zoom lens. That means you can get dynamic, different shots that bring the background and the foreground together, making use of a feature called zoom compression. So, very quick video today on what it is and how to set up that type of shot to get the very best out of these additional lenses. Hello, I'm Ian and I play with drones. Yes, quick video today on how to get the very best out of the secondary telephoto camera that you get with the Air 3 and the Mavic 3. Um, you might have heard a bit about compression and bringing the background into play, but I was wondering, you know, what does it actually mean and, and why would you actually do it? Well, lens compression is a photographic term that describes the apparent change in perspective you get when using a telephoto or zoom lens. It's got the effect of seeming to bring the background much closer to the subject in the foreground. And you can get some really, really cool shots if you've got something in the background that you want to bring more into the main picture. Take this picture I shot up at the Icelandic volcano last year. Now, suddenly that lava looks very, very close to the subject. And the other week, down in Wiltshire, filming around Silbury Hill, largest man-made hill in Europe. I was having great fun using the three times uh, zoom lens there whilst flying around the hill. You can see how using that three times lens, it brings both the subject and the background closer. So you get this real sense of dynamic perspective movement with the fields in the background becoming just as important as the main subject itself. So that's what it's all about, but how do you set up this type of shot? Take that volcano shot. I was up there using a DSLR camera on a tripod. Now that lava was over 600 meters away, but to make it look close, I used a super telephoto lens to bring the entire picture, both the subject and the background much closer. And that is the key thing here. If you're using a telephoto lens, be it on a camera or on the drone, to bring things forward, then you might well need to place the subject further away from you. In this particular case on the, uh, on the volcano, the subject was over 50 meters away from the camera. But because the telephoto's lens was so strong, it brings him to the foreground, way in, as also bringing the lava way in as well, making it look like he was just standing just literally a few meters in front of the lava. Same principle with the Silbury Hill shot. Here is that same shot taken with the standard one times uh, lens camera on the Air 3. You can see the hill, of course. You can see the road running right by it. The fields in the background, way, way in the background. Um, but really, you know, to me, not much, of a, not much of a clip at all, really. Then, staying in the same position, flicking over to the three times telephoto lens, suddenly I'm able to get the type of shot I was actually after. Just the summit of the hill and the rolling field swinging around close up in the background whilst I flew around the hill. Another clip, rising up above this church using the standard lens, of course, you see the spire and you see the background coming into shot over the trees, but the background just looks like I don't know, a very static background as the drone rises up. Take a look at the same shot again using the three times lens. This time, as I rise up, you see the background has also been brought much closer and there is a real sense of dynamic movement. And even this video's opening shot, um, I use a three times telephoto lens, obviously moving the drone much further away from me so that when I switched onto the three times lens, I was appearing about the right size in the picture. I just set myself as the focal point and then flipped off a point of interest active track shot, letting the air circle around me whilst I talked into a microphone. Of course, it's not always about having a subject though, is it? Sometimes you just want to convey a sense of depth and movement that makes the viewer look all over the picture. This uh, little clip I shot on the South Downs a couple of weeks ago near Brighton. It's got no specific subject, but you really get a good contrasting movement between the foreground and the background as you're flying sideways. So, the key thing to remember when you're using the telephoto lens is that if you want a subject in the foreground, you will have to move much further back to make that subject the right size when you kick into the telephoto lens. And of course, if you don't have a subject in mind, then using it on landscape shots, especially when uh, you're flying sideways, really brings in this sense of depth and movement. Um, obviously, flying sideways, you do not want to fly into a tree or anything else for that matter. And that reminds me, uh, I had an email through from the Grey Arrows uh, Drone Club the other day, for those of you in the UK, the Grey Arrows Drone Club has got a new top tier membership level for its members. Now, Grey Arrows, they run a drone scene. I 
talks about that quite a bit. It's easily uh, the best uh, website, I think, for working out where is good to fly and what restrictions, what air restrictions might be in place. Um, they've now got an additional membership level that also includes both drone scene and five million pounds worth of uh, public liability insurance cover for you as well. Uh, that new level uh, they said was 25 pounds a year uh, for both obviously the drone scene and the insurance, but they emailed me a little discount code. Uh, you get 10% off if you quote uh, Ian in London. I can see they uh, really thought long and hard about that discount code. But look, apparently that discount code will work. There's no time limit on it. It should work for now and it should also work in the future. And it is a really, really good uh, website. It is a very useful, uh, well, the forum itself is very good. They do uh, quite a few meetups as well, but Drone Scene itself is easily the most useful tool you've got for working out where it's good to fly. Anyway, look, enough talk. Uh, making the most of late summer here in the UK, getting a few more trips in the van as well, which is also always a real bonus. Um, I also do have some big news coming up, uh, some major, major changes to my channel coming up. So I am a bit flat out busy at the moment and I'm gonna have to do a little bit more on that on another little video in uh, a few days time. So keep an eye out for that. But look, on that, wherever in the world you are, whatever you're doing, until next time, have fun, happy flying.